All right, Uncle Sam FM here, and I am making this video to show you around the latest version of my US expansion file for Football Manager 2020. And this file is intended to recreate the real life football league system in the United States for Football Manager. Out of the box, FM only has Major League Soccer, and it only includes the expansion through the 2020 season. And that's for licensing purposes, so it's totally understandable. However, what my file intends to do is it adds future expansion that SI is unable to include as it will we'll look at uh, MLS in a moment to see the future expansion there. And it also adds the lower leagues to Football Manager. It activates the United Soccer League Championship. Uh, it activates the United Soccer League One as well as the National Independent Soccer Association and so on. And we'll look at all of that. It also adds some other uh, elements of real life football in the United States that's kind of makes the game a little more fun, a little more enjoyable. It really just adds a lot of depth for those of you who are looking for a realistic experience while playing in the United States in FM. And so without further ado, let's jump in. What you see here on your screen is the 2019 season for Major League Soccer. Now, as you can tell, I have actually moved this save ahead to 2026, so I'm well into the future. <clears throat> so this is really a look back. And as we look and see, um, this was the 2019 season. These are the 24 teams that participated, and that is true to FM. This is how it is when you pull it right out of the box. And it uh, also includes the 2020 season. And again, this is uh, also true at FM out of the box. It uh, does include the Inter-Miami expansion. It does include the Nashville SC expansion. However, that is all that SI is able to do <clears throat> because of licensing. However, in real life in 2021, you're going to see two new teams enter MLS. And that is, first of all, in the East, you have Charlotte. And in the West, you have Austin FC. Now, Austin FC has released their logo. I've taken some liberties with their kits. Uh, Charlotte, however, has not released any of their branding. So to make things simple, I simply promoted Charlotte Independence, who plays in the USL Championship Division in real life. And in 2022 in MLS, you see two more teams enter the league, and that is the Sacramento Republic. And again, all I've done is uh, promote the team from USL Championship, same logo. Uh, I did modify the kits a little bit because in MLS, it's all Adidas. And in real life, Sacramento, I believe, uses Nike. Uh, and St. Louis FC is the same. Uh, St. Louis will also be joining MLS in 2022. Again, don't know anything about the branding. So I took some liberties and simply just promoted St. Louis FC from the USL Championship division. So and this is how it is in real life. In 2022, if everything goes to plan, you will have 30 teams in Major League Soccer. Uh, one real quick disclaimer. the uh, We don't know what the alignment's going to be in either 2021 or 2022. It may be they decide that with so many teams, they're going to go to four divisions, maybe six. But uh, for simplicity purposes, and because I don't know, I left the alignment mostly the same, uh, Eastern, Western Conference. Playoffs still just take seven teams from each conference, although that most likely will expand as the, as the league expands. But um, that's how it is. Every, all the rules are default. So player acquisition, trades, uh, allocation money, um, drafts. Uh, all-star game it, all of that is still in um, nothing has changed as far as that goes um, so that is Major League Soccer uh, a couple of things I did include and I wanted to note real quick is the rivalry competitions in MLS you do have rivalries um, and the way these work I'm just going to pull up the Texas Derby to start uh, and we'll look at the 2019 season <clears throat> so Houston and FC Dallas have a rivalry a Derby it's called the Texas Derby, the El Capitan Classic. And the way this competition works is the matches that Houston and FC Dallas play against each other in Major League Soccer count towards this competition. So, for example, in 2019, they played twice. Houston won once, drew once. So they had the better um, um, results between the two teams during that season. So Houston wins the Texas Derby. And so you, you get to count that as part of your trophy case. And... Uh, that is part of FM. I'm pretty sure out of the box. It's definitely part of my file. All these competitions are in the database, so I assume it's it's um, in file still. It, it was up until last year, default. Uh, I also created some rivalry competitions for the expansion teams. For example, Sacramento. 
Sacramento has a real-life semi-rivalry with the San Jose Earthquakes. However, they are in different leagues, so they don't get to um, really play much. So uh, as Sacramento joins the league in 2022, I went ahead and, and created this competition, so it'll kind of start play then. And um, again, it works just like all the other rivalries. I I also added, oops, sorry, I added one for um, the Southeast. Um, so Nashville, Atlanta, and Charlotte. And so this just adds another little kind of dimension to the game, makes it a little more fun, makes those rivalry matches feel a little more important when you're playing in MLS. Um, so again, that's, that is straight out of the box, except for the competitions that I added. Also, in real life, in U.S. soccer, there are um, what we call preseason tournaments, preseason competitions. And uh, one of those is the Visit Tucson. It's taking a second to pull it up for some reason. The Visit Tucson um, Cup. I see the Visit Tucson Sun Cup. And okay, um, it uh, is, and, and some of these I've tried to keep all these as close to real life as possible. Uh, but this is um, a format used two groups, uh, it has MLS teams, but it also pulls in a team from USL San Antonio, pulls in Phoenix, it also pulls in Tucson. Tucson and Phoenix kind of serve as the hosts of this competition, and um, we'll look at the last season results. Um, and so it's just really all this is. It's a very low reputation competition. It's just kind of the idea is just to give MLS teams a chance uh, to have an, a run out with some semi-competitive cop matches before they begin the MLS season. So I've got a few of those tournaments in. Um, some of those are kind of interesting. Uh, the, the IMG Suncoast Pro Classic actually pulls in teams from outside the U.S. Uh, in, for example, Santos from Brazil. Um, and then this is a Denmark team, I think. Uh, yeah, a team from Denmark, and I'm not going to try to pronounce it. Um, but it an, adds another kind of fun little dimension um, as you know, getting your teams ready for the season. So also, I want to make sure that I noted in the U.S. Open Cup, this is kind of the FA Cup for the United States. And it, in 2019, it does, I put in all the same teams that played in it in the 2019 uh, real life U.S. Open Cup. And then in 2020, um, I won't go too deep into it, but I, I can't make a, I can't, I can only do a 2019 version and then a 2020 version. So what that means is that if I don't include all the teams that uh, join their leagues later than 2020 and in 2020 then I, I won't ever be able to add them. So for example, Austin does not uh, enter MLS. They really don't even begin play of any kind until 2021. But because of the way I have to do this competition, I had to bring them in in 2020. So we'll just, just kind of show you, this is full disclosure here. Um, they had no real matches except for they had to play in the open cup. And that's really kind of a limitation of the editor. If I messed with a 2021 Open Cup, what would happen is it would mess with the, comp uh, the continental qualification process. So that's how I had to do that. But the US, and Copa, U.S. Open Cup is in, and it is as close to real-life format as possible. The MLS teams enter a third, fourth round. And um, also, <clears throat> again, All-Star Game is unchanged. And now we kind of move on. Uh, I've activated a few leagues below the United States, and this is the USL Championship. I won't go into all of the details of this, except to say that um, all the same teams in the years they competed are in the competition. So just a real quick look here. In 2019, you see Ottawa is still there. They leave the league in 2020, and you can see that they are gone. Uh, also, side note, Nashville SC who expands into MLS in 2020, they play in the USL Championship in 2019. So if you wanted to have a nice little challenge, you could take over Nashville SC, play 2019 in the USL Championship, get your team ready to compete in MLS, and then they join MLS in 2020. You could do the same kind of thing with St. Louis, who also competes in the USL Championship to begin the game, and then also uh, Sacramento Republic. Um, so that adds another interesting little dimension. And again, 2020, it's the, it's the it's 35 teams that are competing in it this year. And as you as we move on, 2021, 
you start to see some other well by the way 2020 you have the expansion teams enter uh san diego comes into the league in 2020 um somebody in the miami fc comes in in 2020 2021 again you have some expansion teams joining the league um queensboro fc in 2022 there's even more rhode island chicago queensboro fc all uh, fc Bur- uh, buffalo joined the league in 2020 so uh just like in real life it's i have it set up to where it, it mimics uh all the expansion and all of that below usl championship you have usl league one again same story 2019 you have all the teams that competed in usl league one in 2019 uh lansing who was in the league in 2019 and then they folded you'll see that in 2020 they leave the competition whereas you also have some expansion with union omaha new england two uh fort lauderdale joined the league in 2020 2021 as is projected the rochester rhinos joined the usl league one also another division three league uh entering mls is the ni i'm sorry entering starting play uh is nisa and they actually did start in 2019 and i have that um in as is as should be so it was a, a fall season only they had two groups of four with a double round robin uh, one thing that I was not able to recreate uh, was the fact that Philadelphia uh, Fury bailed after one match. They folded. They didn't fold, I don't think, but they forfeited all their games. I could not recreate that, so that's uh, that's the only slight detail that I had to leave off. Another thing to note about the NISA is they plan on playing a fall-spring schedule, and you can't make one league do that when all of the other leagues play a spring fall schedule um they all have to be uniform in fm with the with the editor so what i did instead nisa plays a a spring autumn after starting in 2020 again all the teams that play in the league that are set to play in the league in real life are here um and in the spring and then in the autumn you even have some expansion um so Providence joins the league in uh, in the fall, the Cosmos. And there's one other team that I don't remember. I think maybe it's Connecticut. Uh, and then in 2021, the New Jersey Teamsters will join NISA. And I have that expansion in as well. Uh, then we move on to, and I'm going to, before I go into the, um, what's actually kind of next on the, on the ladder in my database is the USL League 2. This is a league that sits below um, League 1. And it is part of the idea is for this league is that it gives college players a place where they can go and play some summer matches without losing their eligibility um so i that that dynamic of it is hard to create but it is still in my file you can still play as one of these teams it does kind of sit on the bottom of the ladder uh, but it is it is in there and it is just as it is in real life all the divisions are this the way they were in real life in 2019 and then in 2020, you see the alignment change. Playoffs are all still the same. Um, so you can win. You first of all try to win your division, and then you try to win the overall league championship. And that is all as is reflected in real life. And now we move into one of the interesting additions to my database, and that is NCAA college soccer. So uh, when you start a game, if you want to pick a college team, what it'll do is it'll show you 20 different groups. You pick a team from 20 groups. Now these are these groups are randomly drawn together, but I do have the conferences in the game. So for example, if you wanted to pick Syracuse, Syracuse, you see them in group one. None of these teams are in their conference, but if you go, and I believe they play in the American Athletic Conference. Let me look, check their schedule real quick. No, the Atlantic Coast, my mistake. So um, you can go to the American, sorry, the Atlantic Coast Conference. This is where Syracuse plays, and you can see them in their conference. Um, and the way it works, and I'm going to kind of, if you're familiar with college sports in general in the United States, um, then you might be able to just skip past this part. But uh, this is that kind of how it works. You play the teams in your, you play a conference schedule, and you're trying to win your conference. So at this, at the Atlantic Coast Conference has two divisions and they'll play some they'll play everybody in their division and a couple of teams from the other division and we'll just we'll look at a past season so you can see the results 
Um, so here, Syracuse finished third in their in their division. <clears throat> um, so and you and, but you also play non conference games, which is why I had to set those groups. So Syracuse, for example, this season will be playing. They'll play their Atlantic Coast Conference schedule, and then they'll play some non-conference games. And these are the teams that are in those groups. It's not ideal. This is the only way to kind of set it up um, to make it to work as close to real life as possible. So, um, And every conference in the NCAA gets one automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. There are 24 conferences. So the conference gets to decide how they choose their team. Most of the conferences, 21 of the 24, have a conference tournament. So no matter how well you do in league play, you have to win your conference tournament to get that automatic bid. There are three conferences who do not have a tournament, and so the league winner gets to uh, gets their automatic bid. One example is the Ivy League. There is no Ivy League tournament, so whoever wins the Ivy League championship, which it looks like in this situation, there was a three-way tie. Let's go to a year where it was a clear winner. Yeah, so Harvard won it in uh, 2024. So Harvard got the automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. Now, it is possible to qualify without winning your conference's automatic bid. That's called an at-large bid. Maybe you had a season, a good enough season that uh, even though you didn't win your conference, you still proved that you were one of the best teams in the country and so you got inv- you get invited by the NCAA to participate in the national tournament. The national tournament again, forty eight teams, and we'll go to uh, last season. And I believe Cincinnati was the winner in this example. Um, so you have you have a first round for, with forty eight teams, and some teams get buys. So I think it's uh, thirty two play in the first round, sixteen get buys. Second round you have thirty two teams. And so on until you get down to the quarterfinal and the four winners of the quarterfinal go to the college cup, which is what they call the final four, the semifinals of the NCAA tournament. And here you see one example is Western Michigan. So Western Michigan last season did not win their conference tournament. Uh, They lost in the final. They played the Mid-American Conference Tournament. However, as you can see, they had a really good season. That's mostly green, only a couple red, one green, one orange, whatever color that is. So they had a really good season, and therefore they got invited to the NCAA tournament, and they made it all the way to the semifinal before losing on penalties to Syracuse. So um, just a real quick look at the NCAA. Uh, in real life, when, when Major League Soccer drafts their players in the college, the super draft, they draft from the NCAA. In FM, by default, out of the box, those draft players come out of the USL League 2. So this makes that part a little more realistic. Um, Part of the issue has always been the number of players generated. Uh, Unless you revamp the whole league system in in Football Manager, it's only going to generate the same number of players, no matter how many leagues you activate. So what I've done to overcome that issue is I've created a whole bunch of academies. These academies don't actually play in the academy league that I have on in, in the game. But they do generate players, and that make that creates a lot more players, players that become available for, that helps all of the teams to fill their squads because the only professional teams in FM in the U.S. that generate players are the MLS teams or the academy teams. So you can make USL active, but none of those teams are going to generate players. So you've got to you've got to figure out a way to make the academy teams generate more. And the only way to do it really is the way I did it. And that's to create a whole bunch of academy teams. So if you're playing as a college team, which a lot of uh, people find interesting and it is fun, but it, I can't, I can't recreate how it works in real life where they go and they recruit players. So in game, if you pick an academy team or I'm sorry, if you pick an NCAA team, if you want to sign players, there's only really three ways to do it. You can go looking for free uh, transfers, free agents, players that are unsigned and they're just out there in in the ether. You can go pluck them, add them to your team as long as they're within the age restrictions. Or you can go to find academy teams, sign players from the academies. And the issue there is that if there's an academy that's too far away, they're probably not going to want to relocate to sign for you. So your only hope is if there's some academies local. And I've tried to make sure that there's enough academies local to all the college teams that they can that they can do that. The third method for signing players from NCA is 
sign players from other NCAA teams. And that is, that's realistic for the most part because it's like college, it's like transfers. That happens a lot in the United States. Player will go to a college. Uh, maybe they don't like the coach. Maybe they don't think they're good enough playing time. Maybe they just don't like being far from home, whatever. And they'll transfer to another school. And so that, that's somewhat realistic. And it's, I can't totally recreate how it works in real life, but I think I got as close as we, I can given my limitations. So college soccer does add an incredible amount of depth uh, with my file. Also, after the NCAA, after USL League 2, I do have the academy divisions. There are seven, and um, the teams are mostly as it is in real life. That's kind of a moving target. Some teams will field a, a under-17 team one year, and maybe not the next. Um, the, all the MLS academies are in this division, and my real purpose for creating this competition was so that was to recreate the real life competition for the MLS academies. So, for example, here in the Mid American Division, you have FC Cincinnati Academy. So, if you're managing FC Cincinnati, you can keep track of your academy players, how well they're competing in kind of a real life matches. You can even go watch a match, whereas it's, that's not really possible otherwise. Um, so I have that and there is the USSDA championship competition there. Um, and it works pretty much how it does in real life. Um, you can qualify for it from your, by how well you do in your divisional play. And so you can manage in it. Um, although that wasn't the real purpose that I put it in the game for, but Hey, if that's your thing, go for it. If you want to coach under 18 team. Uh, also I, for the Academy players, I do have the generation Adidas cup. What a brief overlook at this overview of this competition. It is real. It happens in real life. And what happens is they have they take the all the MLS academies, split them up into regional groups. So you you will play um, if you're one of the MLS academies, you will try to qualify out of your group. You'll play one match against the other uh, teams in your group, and we'll just look at last season. And if you do well enough, then you move on to the champions group. This will allow your academy to compete against some of the best academies in the world. For example, um, Valencia, River Plate, uh, Pinarol, uh, Club America. There's West Ham, Flamingo out of Brazil. Uh, and it, again, and there's Leon from France. It's a real life competition, and the purpose of it is to give the academy, give the MLS academy players. A little tougher competition than what they face in the USSDA Academy division. Um, so if you if your team didn't maybe didn't finish highly enough in your qualifying group, you could still make it to the Premier Group, which is like a level below. Um, you still get to have some competition against some foreign academies, youth teams. You have Toluca. You've got that team again, <laughs> um, Tijuana, Mount Pleasant, Tigres, um, Hyundai from Korea, either Korea or Japan. Monterey, um, and then uh, Fjolnir. So it's kind of interesting little competition. Again, if you do play the academy, it might be kind of fun to try to take on those foreign clubs. Um, or if you're a managing an MLS team, it's another chance for you to be able to see how well your academy players are doing. Um, I hate that every time. One other uh, quick look at, there's a competition called the MS MPSL Members Cup. This was a one-year competition. It played last year. And it, uh, it, it is, was real life. So if you're interested in taking one of the, some of these compete in the NISA, so if you want to be Detroit City, the first season you, you manage them, you will play in this competition. Again, it only happened one year, and it is in the format that it was in real life. Um, also, I do have another. This, uh, this division uh, is called the U.S. Expansion Teams Division. It doesn't play any matches. The only reason I have it in here is if you want to pick and start the game with one of the teams that do not have any competition to start. So, for example, um, Chattanooga FC does not play any matches in real life. They, they play in the NPSL, but they don't have any matches in, uh, in my, my file. But they do join the NISA. Uh, 2020. So if you want to start the game as Chattanooga, build your team up a little bit. You play in that NPSL Members Cup, for example, and that's what they did in 2019. So so this I created this so that you can choose those teams. And all the expansion teams, including like Austin FC is in there. Um, 
you've got the Rochester joins the USL League One. You have uh, Rhode Island. All these teams that at some point during this during my file join some competition, but do not play in any competition to start. You can choose one of those teams. So um, that's the only purpose of it. Again, it plays no matches. Um, just really so that you can you can pick a team and spend a season or two building it up before it begins play. A um, couple of other side things that I have. I'll, I'll note, first of all, so the Champions League, the CONCACAF Champions League, I didn't touch it this year, didn't have to, so I didn't. I, I left it default. Uh, same with the CONCACAF League. The Campiones Cup, which you play the Mexican champion in a one-off match, and then the League's Cup, which is a kind of a new, um, really it's an exhibition competition. It's a friendly competition. Um, but it's I didn't touch it. All of that is as it was in real life. But I do have a couple of other um, interesting little competitions that I put in. Uh, first of all, and I'll just type this in the Pan. The, uh, I got fat fingers. Pan Pacific competition. Now this was a real life competition. <clears throat> it um, and we'll go back to last year. It's a just a four team knockout competition. Play one match. Um, between the MLS champion, the the K League champion, the J League champion from Japan, and then the A League champion from uh, Australia. Uh, again, just one off. Uh, no matter what, you're guaranteed two matches. If you lose in the semifinal, you do get to play in the third place playoff. Um, and if you win, you play in the final to win the competition. It's a friendly competition. It's um, it um. It doesn't have any real uh, it's low reputation. It's really just there to kind of help get you ready for preseason, and it's a fun it's a fun little run out against some uh, champions from around the world. It's a you know outside continental competition. Um, so Pan Pacific Championship is one another comp uh, another um, kind of fun thing that I've done is so about 10, 15 years ago. In the Copa Sudamericana, that is the South American version of the Europa League. It's not quite as high as the Champions League. It's one level below that. Um, but the used to MLS, you used to be able to qualify for it from North America. I think it was through the Concacaf League or Concacaf Cup. Maybe it was just the MLS champion. But um, they've not been able to do that for about ten years. But that they've started talking about that again because the Concacaf Champions League format changed. They had to really kind of had to drop out when the CONCACAF Champions League had a group stage that took place in the fall. That doesn't exist anymore for, for the American and the Mexican teams. So they've talked about doing to bringing this back. So when I heard about that, I, I dove in and I, I set up the Copa Sudamericana to where it brings in, and we'll go to last season, it brings in the, final, the two finalists, so the winner and the runner-up of the CONCACAF Champions League. So, for example, 2025, you see Orlando City made it, and as did Montreal, so the Montreal Impact. Now, they both got eliminated immediately, but uh, that doesn't always happen. Uh, you can go back to the past winners, and Real Salt Lake won it in 2023. Atlanta United won it twice in a row. Uh, Seattle made it to the final in 2024. Tigres from Mexico got to the final in 2020 and lost to Atlanta United. So um, it's really just something kind of fun. It, I, it used to be in Football Manager. I can remember when I first started playing in FM 2005, you could that you were able to do that, and it was kind of enjoyable. Um, obviously, yeah, a fixture, little fixture congestion, and this is a separate file, so you don't have to play it this way. But it's just kind of fun to get to play against some of the South American teams. And I also uh, created, well, I have a version of the International Champions Cup where uh, the MLS Supporter Shield winner gets to compete in it. So, for example, last season, Atlanta United played in the International Champions Cup. And this is a real-life competition that brings in 10 or so teams from Europe, uh, maybe one or two from South America, and just gives it's, – it's a friendly preseason competition. Uh, it does award a champion. And in uh, in my version of this competition, I – put in the Mexican winner and then the MLS champion or maybe in the supporter shield champion. So for example, Atlanta United was in it last year. It's a fun chance to get to play against some of the best teams in the world. Um, Tottenham, Real Madrid, FC Bayern, Manchester City, uh, Inter, Liverpool, Barcelona, 
PSG. And what it does, is it grabs usually the league champions or the league top four from some of the top European leagues. So um, that's in there. And then one other kind of little side thing. The So the United States, um, go find, uh, it is an international competition, but I think it's a North American international. The U.S. every January, the U.S. national team has a January camp. And so I put that in the game because in this January camp, what they do, the whoever is coaching the national team calls in a lot of domestic players. Those are obviously MLS players, calls in just a full squad of MLS players. Sometimes if there's a, somebody uh, in one of the Scandinavian leagues, he'll, he'll call them in because they also play a, a uh, spring to fall schedule. So um, they never call in anyone else from Europe other than those Scandinavian leagues. And so I put this in just to see how it would work. And it turns out they, the U.S. national team in, in this with this file only calls in domestic players. I'm not really sure why that is, if it's because the reputation is so low or the timing of it. But it really, in my experience, functions exactly as it's supposed to in real life. And uh, I put it in. I created a version of it just so that you can throw it in and, and see if any of your players, uh, if you're managing an MLS team, uh, gets called in to uh, one of these January camps. Gives them a little run out. Maybe increases their fitness a little bit, which is sort of the purpose of it. Um, so, uh, so that is my file. That is some of the little uh, extra things that you can also download and include. And again, my real purpose of it is to expand the real life U.S. experience. And I think it does a pretty good job of that. It's one of the most expansive files that you can find for the U.S. for Football Manager 2020 that stays true to real life. And um, I'm always welcome to comments, to suggestions, uh, to critiques. Sometimes I have all the time people find mistake, little errors that I've made, which I'm I happen and I try to correct those as quickly as I can. I'll put a link in the in the comments. But uh, if you want to go to the SI community forum where I post it, I, I welcome uh, suggestions there or you can comment on this thread, obviously. Um, but this is Uncle Sam FM and I will see you in my next video.